What's going on everybody and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuild C4 here And we're doing the Washington Redskins So last year we, you know, it was a different approach last season We weren't doing all the teams, I didn't want to do any teams in the NFCs I'm going against my word already We already did the Giants real early, early and often And I feel like, you know, we're going to do every team this season We're going to do all 32 teams for a rebuild Why not do the Redskins? Why not now? So, here we go Looking at the Redskins roster, I have not even peeked in. A lot of times I might do my research. I have no idea what this roster looks like. What we know, four rebuilds. 26 is the money age. 27 is all right. And we saw Jordan Reed. So, Kirk Cousins is 29 and he's 86. So, the whole way that you could do a Redskin rebuild, there's a predictable, probably popular way. And that's letting Kirk Cousins hit free agency. Trying to draft a QB. Trying to make it work. What I'm going to do, it's not a it's not a foregone conclusion. We have to negotiate. I'm going to try to hold on to Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins could, could he'll he'll stay. I don't think for five years, so he'll be 34. He should not get any lower than this 86. So we're gonna try our best to resign him. He might not want to resign, which could be you know add a, a wrench to things. But I, I'm gonna go with Kirk Cousins as our starter. We're gonna try to retain him. Uh, look at the running backs. Um, yeah, there's some guys. I have no idea how Chris Thompson's only a 76. Um, should be much higher. Maybe if he's a wide receiver, it might help him out. We got P. Ryan here. We got Fat Rob, who's 24, and he's an 82 overall. That's not a bad rating. We might have something here with this running back core that we don't have to go out and you know use a high draft pick or spend a lot of money in free agency. Uh, wide receiver, we oh, we're gonna need to build up this wide receiver core. I mean, Doxon, normal dev trade. He's a 76. It's going to be tough to get him to develop. We know we have in Jameson Crowder, a really solid slot wide receiver. These ages are absolute money. Pryor's going to be gone. We're getting rid of, we're not going to re-sign Terrell Pryor. But, um, you know, we, we definitely need to get a legit wide receiver one. And we may be able to pair them with Crowder and Doxon for the remainder of the rebuild. We have Jordan Reed, 27. That's the money age, let's be honest. That is exactly the kind of... Um, 26, 27, he's superstar, he's nice. He's going to be the focal point of this offense. He's a franchise player. Uh, we got Trent Williams. We'll hold on to him for as long as we can, 91 overall. Uh, the rest of the offensive line is not terrible. Uh, the right side is good. We got Shreff, 25, 88. We got Morgan Moses, who has, oh, I thought he was above an 80. All right, well, that's not as good, but maybe Morgan Moses can turn things around and get back up into the 80s, and then at least the right side of our offensive line is set. Matt Ioannidis from Temple somehow is an 84 overall rating. I like to see that. That's a key piece. John Allen, I think she, he used to have superstar, still has superstar dev trade. So our defensive ends are set. D tackle, we need to get a D tackle for sure. Uh, Ryan Kerrigan is a little too old. 29, that's not going to be good, but we'll hold on to him. We'll throw, uh, let's see if we can throw Junior Glad up on the trade block and get some value there. Middle linebacker, Zach Brown, 27. That's a fringe. He should be good, though, for the remainder of the rebuild. Uh, Trent Murphy, 26, money. We got Preston Smith, who, you know what? We might actually want to switch him. Long-term, Preston, Preston Smith could be our outside linebacker here um, for... What do we have in the middle? They're on a 3-4, right? So 28. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to make Ryan Anderson a middle line. But he's just a tackle machine. I don't think... I think Ryan Anderson does have the capabilities... To play inside and outside linebacker was really good at Alabama so to have some youth at least let's uh we'll have Ryan Anderson well, actually that's not really that good at all all right maybe we'll move him back we have lots of linebacker it's a log jam here for our linebacking core there's no we have so many young guys what are they doing you know what are what's their plan here I guess there's a bunch of injuries in real life that they're dealing with um maybe I don't know. We'll figure that out. Uh, Josh Dorn, 29. Not a good age, but Kyle Fuller's an 83. He's 22. Dunbar, the converted wide receiver from Florida, 77. You get Fabian Moreau who could develop into something. You know, there's some pieces on this defense. We need to get younger at safeties. Monte Nicholson, can he be the answer? Maybe. 76. We'll definitely give him playing time over D'Angelo Hall. Sua Cravens is fairly solid as well. We're cutting this piece of shit. This guy's a piece of shit. He's gone right away. 
All right, so, you know, plenty of pieces. I guess, you know, looking through our team like that, the number one takeaway is we're going to try and make this the Kirk Cousins rebuild. Let's see more so, maybe to answer a question of Redskins fans. Can Kirk Cousins truly bring this team to a Super Bowl, or is he all, is he just fake? Is he fake news? You know, out of Washington, D.C., fake news. We'll find that out here in this rebuild. Uh, so let's jump into it. All right, so here's what we did. Well, we might as well look at some trade offers. We got Junior Gallet here, surplus requirement. A third and a seventh from England, third from Tampa is probably the better bet there. Still 29, still some value. And I didn't. Vernon Davis is at 87, and we don't need we don't need that. What can we get? A second round pick? Like what team? Like that's be. He probably wouldn't fetch a second rounder. Hmm. Even these, ah, you know, why not? Winning wrong, we'll take that that thing from Denver. It's not like we're getting a cheese them out of a first round pick or anything. Super serious, just helping us get a little little ammunition as we get ready for the regular season. So basically, as I said, there was a log jam on the defensive side of the ball. What were we going to do? How were we going to deal with it? Actually, if I get a better look at it, doing it this way. So what I decided to do was change everything on defense. We are now a four three defense, set to be a uh, three four. Change the playbook, change the, the coaching scheme. So, you know, pe previous times we might not have done that. But now it looks a lot better. We're going to make Monte Nicholson the starter at free safety. Uh, so, Robbie, uh, Ryan Anderson, Zach Brown, and Ryan Kerrigan are our linebackers. You know, there was a little bit of bait making Ryan Kerrigan a defense that or not, but his coverage stats aren't hor horrendous. And he definitely has played outside linebacker good enough in coverage. So we got Trent Murphy now at defensive end along with Preston Smith, 81, 84 respectively. And then Ioannidis and John Allen at D-tackle at 80. So right now, our defensive line is set for the remainder of the rebuild, which is looking a pretty mint. Let's actually put Moreau here in front of Breland. Offense stays the same. There we go. We got Pryor, Crowder, Doxson. Offensive line is as is. Looking at the offensive line, really? I just want to try to get Moses back up into the 80s, which would be nice. And other than that, you know, this is just year one of a rebuild. May very well could make a playoff push. I don't know, but we'll stop at the midseason point, see if there's any contracts we need to talk about. And if not, we'll go right into the postseason. All right, so here we are at midseason with some very important contracts. Zach Brown, Kirk Cousins, Ioannidis, and Trent Murphy are four guys that are pretty crucial for the remainder of the rebuild. So we're gonna try our best to re-engage all of them, but the biggest one obviously is trying to retain Kirk Cousins. I'll keep you guys updated as that progresses. Boom! Is it even? Is it really that hard, Redskins, to bang on a deal with Kirk Cousins? I didn't mat it in three seconds. C4 for GM. All right, so here we are at season's end, and not surprisingly, we did not make a legitimate playoff push as we finished eight and eight. But that's you know that's if that's our starting point, if we're never gonna get any worse than what we are right now i think that's pretty all right considering you know, the other beast in the east look at the stats for the season kirk cousins on the year 3700 passing yards 28 tds 15 picks that's eh. you know what is it maybe expected a little more yards but that's you know for, for the fact that we don't really have any legit not wide receiver one that's not bad uh running the ball we got 1100 yards five tds rob kelly for fat rob 10 tds from chris thompson we got 73 catches, 835 and 7 for Pryor. Almost 1,010 for Jordan Reed. We'll be nice and round up. Uh, 6, almost 702 for Josh Doxson. 817 and 6 from Crowder. 5 touchdowns from Chris Thompson. So still a weapon. I see it there. Uh, the defensive side of things, 136 tackles from Zach Brown, who we were able to re-sign. 120 from the rookie Ryan Anderson, which is pretty good. We got 8.5 from Tre eight and a half sacks sorry, for Trent Murphy. 7 from Preston Smith. So both these guys are adjusting well. To get in their hands in the ground. Six from Ioannidis, five and a half from John Allen. We also have four picks, Zach Brown, four for Josh Norman, two for Cravens, and two for Nicholson. So it looks like our DBs actually are playing fairly well. Definitely a trend in the right direction for our defense. Quickly looking here at the yearly awards, Aaron Rodgers won the MVP. Doesn't really surprise anyone. Looking quickly to see if there's any. There we go. Zach Brown coming at number three for defensive player of the year. Let's see how many Redskins made their names known. What about on defense? Ryan Anderson at number three. Best quarterback. We got Kirk Cousins at seven for best running back. We have no one. Best wide receiver. No one. Offensive line, definitely no one. Defensive line, maybe. No one. Oh, Junior Gallette. Wow, burn. 
Guess that was good value for the draft pick. Zach Brown is number three linebacker. Pretty much just a Zach Brown show here. Maybe a little bit of love here for Josh Norman at number nine. But all in all, we did not show up and weren't represented well in the yearly awards. So let's pop into the offseason. Try to have a decent free agency as well as decent as you can in year one. And then more so, get ready for the draft. All right, so getting a quick look here at the free agents, nothing too spectacular. We did a 51 mil in the bank, which is good, but we're looking at Aguayo, Adolphus Washington. For some reason, Jabril Peppers got cut from the Browns, so we're going to bring him in as safety depth. Maybe we can look at moving him around and put him on offense. I don't know yet, but there's not a whole lot there in terms of players. Let's get into the draft. All right, so looking at the draft recap, very good draft for us to start out. We needed a wide receiver. So we're able to land an 81 overall. Normal dev trade, nothing too, too flashy. But we made it Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver from Alabama. Really, really good. Exactly what we need, especially when you think we need an outside wide receiver. And that could very well be Calvin Ridley. And then the second round, we got a, you know, debatably the best guard for this upcoming draft class. Quentin Nelson. He's only 76, but he had a superstar dev trade. He's going to start for us at left guard. Uh, monster, man. Absolute monster. Probably the most pro-ready offensive lineman in college football today. So we're going to make sure that we get him involved. Uh, third round, we're we continue just to build up depth on the offensive line. We only had one starter in every offensive line position. Uh, so we got this guy here, 76 overall. Quick dev guard. We'll just be depth pretty much. Uh, we got a 73 tackle in the fourth round. A 70 linebacker in the fifth. A 70 wide receiver in the fifth. We get a 66. See, we can't always hit. Every now and then we have a bad pick. Uh, 74 center in the seventh, and then we just try to take a shot on the kicker who had the best combine. He was really first place in every attribute, and we don't really have a clear future at kicker, but he's only a 73, so I guess we'll have a little bit of a kicking battle. But all in all, Quentin Nelson, Calvin Ridley, welcome to the Washington Redskins. All right, so here we go as we get ready for year number two. Not a whole lot has changed from our 8-8 eight eight Redskins team a season ago. We now have Calvin Ridley, a legit wide receiver one. Uh, we have uh, new starting center, Chris. New starting guard and Quentin Nelson. Um, I mean, outside of that, not a whole lot has changed. Defensive line a year better. Yeah. That, I mean, Ryan Anderson after 77. Looks like our linebacking core is showing up. Really, we need this defensive line to continue to develop. We can get everyone here in, like, the high 80s. That's going to be, that's going to be a problem. So, that being said, let's pop in here. In year number two, see if we can make a low-key playoff push. And if not, let's just, you know, continue to build the framework of what is going to be a very successful Washington Redskins team. All right, so here we're at the midseason point, and there are some players we need to look at resending. Uh, Crowder, I think he's going to be our franchise slot wide receiver, so he's going to come back. Fat Rob, on the other hand, 82. I think we're going to let him hit the free agency market. Usually the running back spot is competitive, and I feel like we might be able to do better than that. Worst case scenario, we can let him hit the market and try to bring him back. Preston Smith is coming back. Brandon Schrift has to come back. We will tag Brandon Schrift if we can't get him signed up to a long-term deal, but we're trying to keep everyone in-house outside of Fat Rob here. So it's season's end. We failed to make the playoffs yet again. With a 10-6 record. The Eagles beat us by a tie. Are you kidding me? Are we, we must have been first team. Now look at this. We're number nine. He's still, you look, you get the Packers somehow makes it in over us. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, at least we're, I mean, we're going in the right direction, I suppose. But, oh, that's just, that's not even, that's just annoying. Look at Kirk Cousins on the air. 4,000 passing yards, 28 TDs, 12 picks. That's, you know, if that's going to be a standard stat line, that's good enough to get us into the playoffs. I don't know if it's so much to get us the Super Bowl. But those are like playoff QB numbers. Look at the running attack. We got 900 yards, 9 TDs from Fat Rob. 717 touchdowns from Chris Thompson. So very, I don't know what it is in the sim algorithm that's making this running back to go off, but Chris Thompson will be a, a key going forward. Uh, as we looked at maybe potentially change up the running back room with no more fat Rob. Uh, receiving, we got 78 catches, 1,100 yards, and 10 TDs from Jordan Reed. That might be the best stat line we've seen in a rebuild from a tight end. Uh, Josh Doxson had almost, we'll, we'll round up everything, uh, almost 800 yards and 6 TDs. Rookie Calvin Ridley, almost 900 yards and only one touchdown. So I guess Doxson and Reed kind of ate there. Crowder, 70, 76, and 5. Chris Thompson had 20 total touchdowns on the season. What a monster. 
Um, I mean, I guess we can see how our rookies did, I suppose. Only, uh, we only one sack given up by Nelson and Norman Chris, so those guys could be good down the stretch. On uh, defense, 138 tackles for Zach Brown, 110, sorry, for Ryan Anderson. We got 16 sacks from Jonathan Allen, 11 and a half Trent Murphy, 9 and a half Preston Smith, 7 from Matt Ioannidis. Our defensive line, those are Philadelphia Eagle defensive line numbers right there, baby. Uh, as far as interceptions are concerned, 8 picks from Josh Norman. Great year from him, even though he's getting up there in age. Three picks, Nicholson, two Fuller, and a bunch of picks there as well. So our defense, man, this is a good team. And like I said, you saw the standings. Uh, you know, some some jabroniness, some Madden cheese happening, I suppose. Uh, Tom Brady won the MVP. Uh, whoa. Let's just see if we have any Redskins here. If any Redskins make any of these lists. So we got Zach Brown and Jonathan Allen both getting on the short list for defensive player of the... What's this guy's name? Long down. <laughs> That's hilarious, Dave. Long downs for president. Calvarelli came out number six there for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Best QB. Kirk Cousins at seven. Best running back. Chris Thompson at ten. Best wide receiver. We're not going to have anyone. Offensive line. Brendan Schreff at four. We were able to re-sign Trent Williams at eight, even though he gave up a boatload of sacks. Jonathan Allen, number three for defensive line. We got Trent Murphy at number nine for D-line. Josh Norman, the second best defensive back in football. So, very, very frustrating that this happened. Um, yeah, let's quickly, before I forget, while I'm on the spot, we're going to spend our coach XP. I, I tell you, I can't stress enough. Spending your coach XP, we're going to go, we have young DBs, we have young D-line. It's the best thing, best thing to do, especially offensive line. Uh, let's pop for the offseason. Hopefully we can land a stud running back in free agency or the draft and make the playoffs in year three. All right, so we were looking at free agents. We were talking about running backs, and it sucks when Fat Rob's like the best option there, Tony Andrews, TJ Elder. So we're going to try, and we're going to spend our first-round pick on trying to bring in a running back. But look at our negotiations here. Something crazy has happened. I've never seen it before. Left tackle, 78 overall left tackle. I don't know if he got cut or that's a free agency move or what. He's 78. And he has a superstar dev trade. So he is a franchise tackle. We need to start planning for life beyond Trent Williams. So we're overpaying. We're paying $16 million over three years for the main of the rebuild for a superstar tackle. I'm making sure we can get him. I mean, there's still a chance we might not. But look at that. We are 108 points to one, uh, 97. And then we're just, you know, depth again trying to bring back Jabril Peppers on a one-year rental like he's a blockbuster. But I hope we get this tackle. And hopefully we can get a stud running back in the draft. So getting a quick recap of our draft in the first round, we got our running back. Not the best running back we've got, but the trace is sexy. He's a 77 overall. He's a power back with superstar dev trait, 90 trucking, 90 stiff arms. So it was very, very easy to make him Bo Scarborough from Alabama, 6'2", 236. An excellent pairing with Chris Thompson in our backfield. 77, you know, in three years' time, two, three years' time at this rebuild, depending on how long it goes, he should very well be a mid-80s running back. And then the second round, we finally actually hit on a tight end. I wanted to get another tight end in, in there with uh, Jordan Reed. And we're able to get Mark Andrews, the tight end from Oklahoma, 78 overall with quick dev trait. Very, very rare. I wasn't I wasn't going to use Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is the kind of guy that should be for a team uh, that's going to be, like, he needs a starting tight end. But he's really the only junior in college football that would be worth in, like, similar ratings to this. So we decided to use him. Outside of that, not a good draft. C4 has not had a good draft today. I don't know if they patched something or what, but I had five wide receivers that look studs. One's a 73, nothing. One's a 72, nothing. We got uh, Miss, Miss. We got 74 guard here, which is not bad. Miss, 69 wide receiver, 69 wide receiver, 74 tackle. So outside of some off offensive line draft cheese. Not a good draft outside of the top two picks, but Scarborough, I'm very excited to see how he looks and plays in this offense. So let's jump into year three. All right, so here we go for year number three. Our team is looking fairly solid. Offensive line is coming together. Look at that. Nelson's up to an 83. We got depth on depth on depth. Center spot work in progress. Jordan Reed, uh, 96. Wide receiver Ridley's up to an 83. We have, yeah, it's Mick Dawson, an outside guy. Crowder's an 81. We'll go Scarbo and Thompson as our two running backs. Cousins is an 86. Definitely need Josh Dawson to continue to develop if he can get into, uh, you know, 82, 83, somewhere like that. By the end of this season, that'd be fine. On the defensive side, Norm's still hanging on. Kyle Fuller, 
There's a Kyle, no, Kendall Fuller, sorry, 83 overall. Defensive line, John Allen up to an 88, coming off a 16 and a half sack season. This D-line is fairly scary, so there you go. If you're doing a Redskin rebuild, just switch their defense to a 4-3, you'll be fine. Anderson's an 80, Brown's an 86, Kerrigan's an 85, but our safeties are looking good for young guys. Cravens is 83, and out of nowhere, Monte Nicholson's an 84 overall. I don't know where this development's coming from, ever since we made him famous in our debut episode of the Philadelphia Eagles Connected Franchise Mode. Uh, yeah, so year three, we're eight and eight, ten and six, so I guess all is left to do is make the playoffs. Come on, Kirk Cousins, do it for Julie. All right, so we were at the midseason point. Time to talk about contracts. Fuller, we're going to try to bring him back. Cravens, we're going to try to bring him back. Dotson's is odd because he's not playing very well. I think we're going to let him hit the market with that 12 mil, maybe get someone. Chris Thompson, he is 28, which is not a good age for the running backs, but for the Sims' sake, he has been dominant as our running back two and third down back. So we're going to bring him back. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So we're gambling on Josh Dotson. Hopefully we can grab someone else in free agency. So here we at the end of season number three. No playoffs. Ah. Damn it. Eight and eight tied. Oh my that's the second year in a row. We've lost by a tie. I don't know. I don't know what Madden's doing right now. Looking at our team stats. Uh Cousins 3,700 passing yards, 25 TDs, 8 picks. I mean, he's not putting up. The kind of numbers we really need him to. He's not putting up bad seasons, just not great seasons. And we kind of need him to be great. Come on, Captain Kirk. Running the ball, Bo Scarborough's a rookie, 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. We got 8 TDs here from Chris Thompson. So running attack, not ideal, especially behind our offensive line that we're trying to build. Jordan Reed, 78 catches, 838 and 9. We got 1,000 yards and 5 TDs from Calvin Ridley. So Ridley and Reed are very, very good. Dodson again underwhelming, so we're glad that we didn't pay him big money to try to resign right then. Crowder from the slot, 855 and 6. That's a very acceptable season from him. As far as I give a shit about blocking. Uh, as far as defense, we got 142 tackles for Zach Brown, 128 for Ryan Anderson to go along with 13 and a half sacks from John Allen. Monster. 12 from Trent Murphy, 6 and a half Ionitis, 6 and a half Preston Smith. We got four picks for Josh Norman, three for Cravens, and then uh, the rest of the guys here kind of rounding up the bunch. Defense played well. Credit where credit is due, defense played well. Just quickly, we're just going to look at the MVP. Jags dominated. Blake Bortles won himself an MVP award, which is absolutely ridiculous. But uh, sure, why not? You know why? Why not? That's part of the offseason.
11 million dollars. I don't even know how that works. I guess we don't eat the dead cap. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we missed out on every good free agent that we possibly could have got. But it's okay, because we have a franchise quarterback, and we'll be fine. Let's go, Russell Wilson, new quarterback of the Washington Redskins. All right, so looking at our draft as we get ready for year number four, we, in the first round, got Greedy Williams from LSU. Uh, first name's something. It's like Honey Badger, but his name's, they literally call him Greedy Williams. He's one of the best freshmen in football today. So, 79 overall, normal dev trade, good size, preparing just in case it has to go to year five, and we don't have Josh Norman. Uh, in the second round, we get a good wide receiver. We didn't modify him or anything. Marshall Manningham, maybe the brother of Mario Manningham, or the son at this point. Uh, 79 overall from Tennessee, good size. But the better of the two wide receivers, we got Donovan Peoples-Jones from Michigan, 79 overall, superstar dev trait. Last draft, we tried to hit on like four wide receivers. It didn't quite work out. This draft, we weren't messing, making that mistake twice. This guy, Donovan Peoples-Jones, will be taking over for Josh Doxson as the opposing outside wide receiver uh, from Calvin Ridley. Big things. Big things. And then outside of that, we just had some solid depth, a couple bomb picks. Rather than that, I'm very excited to welcome Greedy Williams, Manningham, and more importantly, Donovan Peoples-Jones to the squad. Let's see what Russell Wilson can do for this Redskins team as we get ready for year four. So year four, a new look for the Washington Redskins as we have a new quarterback under center here in Russell Wilson. Looking good, man. This is a solid, very, very solid offense. No real, obviously the center is still a work in progress. But outside of that, man, no real weaknesses whatsoever. Uh, definitely the best offensive line Russell Wilson has got to work with, even with that weakness at center. Wide receivers are looking really, really nice right now. We still got Jordan Reed, 96. Defense is developing very well. Nicholson up to an 85. John Allen up to a 90. Ioannidis 87 is very, very good as well. And Josh Norman, old Josh Norman still holding on with an 88. And Kerrigan with an 83. But overall, very solid team. Again, we've been in the playoff on every year in this rebuild. But have just, you know, not been able to get to the big show. This could be the year. No more Kirk Cousins stinking up the joint. Let's see what Russell Wilson can do. All right, so looking at contract extension time, we don't have a whole lot of money because we're eating up some of that cap from Kirk Cousins' contract. So really, if we have to prioritize Monte Nicholson and Jonathan Allen in case this goes to a year five, but uh, Norman and Williams, like, we just don't have the money to be able Maybe Norman's 11 over one, I don't know. But John Allen, Monte Nicholson, and then we'll start looking into the t second tier. Maybe Ryan Anderson because he's a starter. Um, but yeah. With Russell Wilson comes the downside of not having a whole lot of salary cap. So at the year number, year number four, finally a playoffs. Finally. Thank you very much, Russell Wilson. Thank you. As our team, 11-5, and five, still a just dogfight in the East. Tied for the first place. But hey, at least we got it this year. No tie for the Eagles to put us over. I'll take that and a first round bye. Hell yeah. Russell Wilson, 4,300 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, 13 picks. Exactly what we needed. Kirk Cousins was not going to be giving us that. He got straight up like 500 more passing yards and 10 more touchdowns than what Kirk Cousins would have got with this offense. Uh, running the ball, Scarborough, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. Thompson also had 8 TDs. Players so receiving 82 catches, 1,000 yards, and 11 touchdowns for Jordan Reed. 965 and 6 from the rookie Peoples-Jones. 974 and 7 from Ridley. 978 and 9 from Crowder. So literally one game away literally from having like 4,000 yard receivers. That's insane. On defense, 125 tackles. Zach Brown, 125 for Ryan Anderson. We got 15 sacks from Murphy. 10.5 Preston Smith. 7.5 John Allen. 7.5 Ioannidis. Um, 5 picks. Kendall Fuller. 3 Ryan Anderson. 2 Josh Norman. 2 Monte Nicholson as well. Looking at the yearly awards for the MVP weight. Oh my god! For the MVP race, I thought maybe with Russell Wilson we might be able to get it. He still comes in at number three. Looking for offensive player, he went to Devontae Freer and Russell Wilson coming at number two. Defensive player, of the year, Ryan Anderson coming in at number two as well. So getting a little bit shafted on uh, both of those awards. But hey, we made the playoffs. Who are we taking on? Not the maybe the Eagles. We're probably going to be the Eagles. 10-6 and six Rams at FedEx Field. Let's go, Russell. Let's see what we can do. All right, here we go as we take on the Rams. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna control the moments too too much. I really feel like let's let the Sim do the job. I think they can get the job done. 
So for field goal, I only ever want to control the moments like when I play offense only if we're on like a severe, severe losing streak in our rebuilds. And we're 2-1 and one in the last three. And I feel like Russell Wilson can probably take us to the promised land. He knows the Rams on the back of his hand. As we're down 14-10 here in the first half. Down one point. All right. One point ball game. Let's go defense. Defense is not playing well. I'll tell you that right now. Defense is not playing well. As we miss the extra point, we're down two. Oh my god, come on, let's go. We go up, we get the go ahead, big end of game drive. Big stop. And we make this. I don't know what's going on, but we won! I don't know what happened there in the fourth quarter. It looked like absolute madness, but enough is enough, and it's time for a change if anyone gets that. But on the day, Russell Wilson, 306 passing yards, two touchdowns. Scarborough, 27 carries for 109 yards. As the Redskins are able to knock out the LA Rams 26 to 21 to go to the NFC Championship. Russell Wilson is a god. He's a monster. He's a machine. He's exactly what we needed. All right, here we go. NFC Championship game against the 9 and 7 Saints. Let's see if Russell Wilson is the deal. Is he the real deal? All right. All right. Looking so so far so good. We're drilling down the field. We kick the field goal. The open score of the game up three zip. Beautiful. Looks like the, the Saints are going for it on fourth down every play, judging by the score line. All right, our defense has done a decent enough job, but our offense, come on, we got to put some points up on the board. There we go. 10 10 tied up ball game going into the second half. The action's fast and furious. Can we equalize? Can we equalize? We have to settle for a field goal. Oh, we're playing good defense. Oh, third down. Come on, this is it. Third down. Fourth down. Red zone. On the one. Up three. We're up three. Looks like they're, they're no... Oh, God. Okay, we're down four. Let's go. Red's third down. Oh, red zone. Come on, baby. Come on, Russell. This is why we paid so much money for you. 27-24. Come on, get a final stop here, defense. Yes! We're going to the Super Bowl. Wait, did I jinx it? I might have jinxed it. Yo, we are. Go to the Super Bowl 27 to 24. That is the worst commentator you'll ever see in a play of the moments in your life. Fast and furious. Jacoby Brissett, the quarterback, the franchise QB for the Saints, unable to get it done. As in year one with the Redskins, Russell Wilson has brought us to a Super Bowl. 210 yards, one TD passing, 27 carries, 106 yards for Scarborough. He's been an absolute monster as the Redskins are going to the Super Bowl. And in the Super Bowl, what? The Browns? Let's go. We got, we have to win this. The Browns? All right, here we go. Super Bowl against the Browns. We better be able to get the job done. I don't want to take sight of the Browns. They have a better overall. Our team right now is an 80s. This is actually one of the, this is probably the worst overall team we've had to make to a Super Bowl. 86 Redskins. The Browns are at 88. But I think, I think Russell Wilson should be good enough there we go up 14 zip that's i mean it's the browns this is this is the one time the sim should play in our favor up 21 to 7 where we're just our foot is on the throats and we're not getting off the gas we're slowing down here a little bit that's a lie 31 10 31 17 look the browns are making a push out of nowhere 31 to 20 as the fourth quarter begins looking to put this game out of reach a 14 point advantage and we settle for back-to-back -back field goal, so it's 17 points, still a chance for the Browns, but most likely, Russell Wilson is going to get the job done. He's going to do the deal. And just like that, just by the, the frantic move in free agency, deciding last second with spending all of our cap money to bring in Russell Wilson, only like 50 points. No one wanted Russell Wilson. That was the best part about it. No one else. We had no competition as far as bidding for Russell Wilson. With Kirk Cousins still sitting on the roster, holding Julie as tight as he possibly can. Big dog C4 went out, brought in Russell Wilson, sent Kirk Cousins to the curb. And just like that, in year one, with probably the weakest team, I can even think back to like Madden 17. I can't think of a team that was 86 overall. It's not a bad team at all. But the fact that I've 100% had teams that are 90, 91, 92, and we don't even have a playoff win... I guess this goes to tell you, you 100% need to have a franchise QB. You can't have a good QB. Your QB got to be in the 90s. If he's not in the 90s, son, you ain't winning a Super Bowl here in Madden 18. 
This is almost a proven fact. So thank you guys for watching the rebuild of the Washington Redskins. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know a lot of you guys are Eagle fans. We had to deal with it. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see me rebuild next. If this is your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Check out my Patreon page if you want to look to support me there. It's in the link, first link in the description below. And until next time, guys, it's C4 saying peace out.